Okay, so the next step is to put the standoffs on the frame so we can mount the flight controller. And also we're going to have to put a little bit of Velcro underneath or in between the standoffs so we can mount the receiver. I've already gone ahead and put some Velcro on the receiver. And what you want to do is cut a piece so it fits it nicely and then cut that other piece so it sticks right in the middle like that. Standoffs, you can put them on before you put the bottom frame on, and you can use the smaller screws. And then for the flight controller, now these come pre-soldered, you can solder it yourself if you want. Here we can see the two different types of NAS Air 32 flight controllers. You've got the Rev 6 on the left and the Rev 5 on the right. For our purposes, we'll just go over the Rev 5 board. If you happen to get the Rev 6, it's the same procedure in order to solder the board for a racing drone. We're going to use the same pins as the Rev 5 anyway. What you'll also notice in your pack is that you'll get some pin headers and also some wires or a wiring harness. We're going to have to solder the pin headers to the board so we can connect them to each of the corresponding components. Each set of pin headers will be connected to their corresponding component on the drone and we'll go over them in detail as they come up. We've got a set of 3x6 pin headers. Now these are for the motor outputs. We've got four motors in total, so you'll only need to connect four leads. But we're going to go ahead and solder the whole lot anyway. This is probably the hardest bit, so it pays to take a little bit of time. What you want to do is you want to have your solder tip nice and wet and you want to try and keep all of the solder for each connection on that connection. Try not to bridge any of the other pins when you're soldering. It'll take some time but as long as you go slow and steady, you don't apply too much heat, you'll get there in the end. Okay, so I'm going to slow one of these connections down and we're going to go through it in detail. What you want to do is you want to have your solder tip nice and wet and here you'll notice that the pin sticks up about 2 mil above the board and what you want to do with the solder tip is you want to have it touching the board and also the pin. You'll see that the soldering iron is laid down first, right next to the pin. It is touching the board as well as the pin. 
what you want to do is you want to lay the solder right on top of the soldering iron right next to where it's touching the pin so you can make this three points of contact you want to slowly move the solder in as it's drawn up by the board once the connection is made first take off the solder when there's enough and then remove the soldering iron if you want you can go back over this video and watch carefully how the soldering iron is moved in onto the pin and then the solder is pushed onto the connection or onto the pin and is drawn up by that heat and then quickly taken away and then the soldering iron tip is taken away quickly before the solder has a chance to set. You want to try and keep all of the solder for each connection on that connection. Try not to bridge any of the other pins when you're soldering. It'll take some time, but as long as you go slow and steady, you don't apply too much heat, you'll get there in the end. So the last step is to wire up the cable to connect to the receiver. As explained before, we're going to be using CPPM mode, so we don't have to use the pin header and the wiring harness that comes with the flight controller. All that we need is a three wire lead with a plug on the end. You can actually make one from the wiring harness. Cut off one of the leads and make sure they all run to the same plug. Make sure you've tinned the pads first. And what you want to do is you want to solder the yellow signal wire or white wire to the number one pad then the red wire to the little dot and then the black or brown wire goes to the other pad attaching the receiver you want to make sure that you put this jumper pin over the first pin it's quite simple you just slide it over and that puts it in CPPM mode
C's. We go one, two, three, four along this way for the flight controller. set up the transmitter, the 5.8 gigahertz Voscam transmitter comes with pretty much all the parts that you need to connect the transmitter to the video camera. Um, you won't need this lead for now, you can use this if you've got a GoPro that you want to hook up by another similar camera and then you can simply screw the antenna on so simply and with this lead you're going to have to ply some of these wires apart as you can see here the wire will go it only goes one way so should be something like that for the video camera I've already got mine set up in a 3D printed case your case should come if you've got the run cam you should be supplied with a case that already comes with it it'll look something like that but anyhow what you want to do is um, you can set it up without but it's good to put the case on now Also, with the camera, you're going to want this lead. The camera comes with a few leads, but we want a three wire connector with the three pin plug. There are a few channels that will work with your transmitter. Some legal, some aren't, depending on which country you're in. But in Australia, if you just set it to channel one in band A, which means all of them pointing upwards, you shouldn't have any problems. So the next step is to join the transmitter and the video camera together. Remember you will need your other half of the JST connector. Depending on what one comes off of the drone, you'll want to match that. So we've got a male coming off the drone, so we want a female one. And 
essentially all of the all of the wires are listed on here. You've got two grounds. The audio, we won't have audio, but we'll have video and we'll also have power. So essentially you just want to connect each of the colours together, disregarding the white wire, and then we'll also connect all of the red and black wires to our power cables. This would be a good time to review how to solder. Remember, if you need some heat shrink, you're going to put that on first. What we want to do is solder both of these to the other one. First up, we'll do this one. Now remember that you want to have all of the wires cut and tinned, and it's just a matter of applying heat and drawing the wires.
for the other wires. It's fairly straightforward. You want to connect the yellow and the black wire from the transmitter to the camera. And also you want to put the other ground for your power from here. Remember, each wire you want a little bit of heat trim. Go ahead and solder them up. 